You know, one of the things that was is sort of a um, surprise for me in education, so I prep school and Stanford and undergraduate and all of that, and then I was going to be, I was supposed to go on to graduate school in biology because I did okay in biology. And then, uh, but I'd been at ROTC, so there was going to be active duty as a, an Army officer. And I could have cut that short and done ahead with some kind of doc and postdoc and all that stuff, but I really didn't want to. And so I did two years in the Army active duty where I learned about training. And training blew my mind. It was this you know, total equality of outcome situation where you will jump out of an airplane five times at the end of this airport <laughs> training course. Uh, whether you like it or not, whether you do the homework or not, that's what's going to happen. And uh, <laughs> you know, that, that, that insistence on outcome and then just the forcing of it. And I saw the quality of teaching, often by black sergeants, of uh, just things like how to down, you know, how to do a parachute landing fall and things like that, was just outstanding. It was, it was. They'd done it a million times, and you could say, well, they're really tired of it. No, they're really good at it, and and the the training just knocked me out. It it, it was the most important thing, many important things I think I learned in the military is that that kind of focus on just getting it right is an amazing thing to impart. Is that part of what is going on with your courses, do you think? Yeah, you know, the, the central thesis is, right now we're, we're living in a world, if, if I asked any of us, you know, what percentage of the population you think is capable of contributing to cancer research or start starting the next Google or, or um, you know, writing the next novel, most of us will say, oh, well, today it's 1% maybe, maybe with the great education system it's 5%, hmm. but I think that's because we have some blinders on on what's possible. Uh, it's based on our experiences where we would go through the system, work, working in lockstep, we're all accumulating these little Swiss cheese gaps because we're all being pushed along at the same rate, mm -hmm. and at some point, we see a lot of kids hit a wall in algebra class, uh, not because they're not bright, not mm -hmm. because algebra is difficult. It's because they got, had some gaps in unit conversion. Or calculus was my wall. I'll calculus is the it. wall, and it's yeah. usually gaps in algebra, and it, you mm -hmm. don't even know it, or physics, ah. and it's gaps in calculus. Uh, and hmm. we are seeing more and more uh, that if these kids can fill in these gaps, that's what's keeping... So it's really, it's a, you know, I, I'm starting to get more and more convinced it's not just 5% or 10% who can do these kind of be members of the creative class, so to mm -hmm. speak, but I think it'll be 40 or 50 or, or 60 or maybe 100%. And it's almost an imperative that it does get to that world because you know, we see what's happening with automation and, and the need for physical mm -hmm. labor as much in a lot of industries or even information processing. Uh, and you know, I kind of imagine we need to go to the Star Trek reality where uh, everyone is a explorer, a researcher, uh, a scientist, an artist of, of, of some kind. 